Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonin Private Wines video. We often talk here about high altitude wines or extreme altitude wines from Argentina in particular because they are our favorite type and I've mentioned aspects of what altitude does to vines, why it matters to the quality of the grapes, and eventually the taste and the features of a specific wine. I've hinted here and there in a few videos about this subject, but I thought it would be useful to dedicate a full video to this, to gather all of the main facts in one single place. So this is why altitude matters to wine. Let's go. I think this fact we all already know about and probably agree upon, altitude is just cool, or at least cooler. The higher you go, the cooler it gets relatively, and that's because as you increase elevation, there is less air above you, thus the atmospheric pressure decreases. And as pressure decreases, air molecules spread out further, air expands and gets thinner, and that causes the temperature to drop simple basic fact. For this reason, as you're climbing, you lose 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit for every 1,000 feet up you go in elevation. This on its own explains a lot about the effect of altitude on your wine. In any given region, grapes at higher altitude will ripen slower and ripen less because it's cooler. Overall, they ripen less so throughout the growing season, which will retain more acidity into the grapes, provide less aromas of ripe fruit and cooked fruit as well, less sugar too, therefore lower alcohol levels. All of this just because it's cooler up there. Because of this, you can also grow grape varieties that need less heat, like white grapes. As an example, there is an important wine region near Barcelona in Spain called the Penedès that makes a lot of wine. It goes from the low Mediterranean coastline to elevated areas at 2500 plus feet above sea level in a matter of just a few tenths of miles, very close. In this area, they can therefore grow big, bold reds like the Syrahs or Grenache, but also zingy, crisp whites like wrestling in the altitude vineyards. So they can grow Mediterranean big reds, reds and grapes that you would normally grow in Germany, for example. All of this within the same region. They can even make some really acidic and zingy sparkling wines there as well. And if that's not cool, well, I don't know what is. All within the same region. So cool. Beyond this rather obvious effect of altitude, a lesser known one and even more interesting effect of elevation is the result of a greater temperature variation between diurnal temperature, the temperature during the day, and nocturnal temp during the night. Because it's higher, there's less atmos atmosphere above a site. Therefore, there's less clouds or fog obstructing sunlight to hit it, and therefore it gets hit harder and quicker during the day and temperature rises very quickly when the sun rays starts to hit in the morning. For the same reason, temperature at dusk drops very swiftly and goes way down colder at night than in the plains because there is no clouds or humidity to retain the heat close to the ground. The result is that grapes can still ripen in altitude, you can still grow a big bold Malbec that needs a lot of sun and a lot of heat to ripen fully, even at extreme altitudes because there's abundant sun and heat during the day. But in the lower plains, the night temperature would still remain quite warm, which will, after a while, over an extended period of time over summer, slowly but surely eventually destroy a lot of the fresh fruit flavors in the grapes. All those aromas of fresh red berries, of blueberry, of zingy red currant that the grape produces, if there's intense heat during the day and solid warmth during the night, all of those zingy fresh flavors get replaced, destroyed and replaced by heavier notes of raisin and dried apricots, the figs, all of those dried fruits, and so on. Now, if the temperature drops to cool temperature at night, which is the case at high altitude, those delicious fresh berry flavors found in red grapes, 
or the zingy citrus for white grapes, for example, are preserved and you'll find them, taste them eventually in your wine because the night, the cold in the night, preserves them. At high altitudes, grapes ripen and get gorgeous and rich because of abundant sun, but they remained vibrantly fruity as well. The best of both worlds. And it doesn't stop there. You thought this was already good enough? Two very strong effects of high altitude? And you thought this was cool enough, right? Well, add another effect of high elevation from an unexpected source, perhaps UV light or UV radiations. Because we're higher in the atmosphere, there's less air or thinner air, less dust as well. So there's more UV rays that hit the vines and hit the grapes. So to protect themselves against those UV rays that are pretty bad, that's why you put sunblock on your face when you go hiking in the mountains, well, the baby grapes protect themselves and they synthesize more tannins in the skin of the grape berries, forming a thicker skin, essentially with more tannic protection, more polyphenols. They even create more aromas and flavors as well within those thicker skins. So you have more tannins, more intense flavors, and they don't get cooked by the heat because it's cold at night. The acidity remains in there and those concentrated fresh fruit aromas are preserved. How wonderful is that? This is how you end up with these outstanding extreme altitude wines, including from Argentina. There aren't many areas where you can actually grow grapes at such extreme altitudes as you can in Argentina and those high sites are very remote so they have not been explored, exploited viticulture wise very much in many places which is why such wines are just so rare and why every country does not produce such wines. This is a real treat from nature pretty much exclusive to the Andes Mountains in South America. Those high altitude wines cost more to make because they come from such remote locations, but they are, if not better, as many think, including us, at least distinct and different. There are also some key advantages to altitude that I haven't mentioned here, but since we're making a complete video on the subject, well, we might as well talk about them, such as allowing to grow grapes at latitude or latitudes closer to the equator that would otherwise be too hot or humid for quality viticulture. Near the tropics, it's generally not good to make good wine. With altitude, you can do so more easily. Same for hot continental areas that get really hot in summer and where grapes would simply cook or raisin during the growing season. If it's a location that is high enough, even in arid areas, you can still grow quality grapes for winemaking. Finally, altitude is often a refuge for vineyards following the consequences of global warming or climate change. As the average temperatures increase, Vineyards are often planted higher and higher to compensate. You find this even in the Napa Valley. There's only two way out, higher in altitude or higher in latitude in the Northern Hemisphere. So wine producers plant more and more at higher elevation or let's say closer to the poles. And now you know why. Going higher, going higher closer to the poles as well, we have to migrate and move quality viticulture somehow. And now you know it all. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers.